Welcome back to Total Line. Delighted to be joined today by Tyrone Elith, head of his BKB debut at BKB 36 on January 27th. Tyrone, how you doing? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing very well, thank you. Good, man, good. This is your debut. You know, the fans on this promotion haven't seen you before, but it's not your first venture into bare knuckle. You know, talk to me about what kind of fighter you are. What can we expect to see on the night? Um, you know, I go in there with a game plan, and depending on how the fight goes, I either stick to it or, you know, make it up as I go along. But um, I like to put on a show for the crowd. You know, it's never a dull moment, whether I'm getting hurt or hurting people. You know, I like I like to put on a show. I like to I like to be a showman, showboat. You know, that's me. Do what I can, to make people smile. You know, it's I know I know it's a fight, but it's also like they've come they've come to watch somebody. You know, it's it's entertainment, and I like to be an entertainer. Yeah, I suppose one of your the main things we notice about you when you fight is well, your height. What well, you're six foot eight, right? How yeah. how do you think that kind of gives you an advantage or, you know, how is that been? Because you are very tall, you know, how does that help you or how does that affect you in the ring? Um, suppose it is an advantage in some sense, like not a lot of fighters have fought many people my height. So it's like, it throws them off a bit, you know, just having somebody with such a long range, such a long range, range like myself. And, um, but there's some fighters out there that like to get up on the inside and when they do, you know, that's when the damage is done. So I have to tie them up, hold them off or, you know, work them as well. So the advantage is there, but it's also a disadvantage as well. So it's like there's pros and cons to it, but there's more pros than there is cons, depending on how you work with a start, work with the height that you've got. Yeah, I suppose it's all about keeping that distance, using that advantage, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. I've been given a gift, and if I don't use it right, then there's no point in... No point in having it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you see it as a gift? Do you see it as like a, you know, like an advantage? Oh, def definitely, yeah. In the, in the fight game, not so much as when I was a kid, you know, when we was playing hide and seek and that with my mates, trying to get in them small spots. <laughs> I was no good at no good at that. But, you know, when it comes to fighting, I, I would say it is, a, is an advantage on my behalf, yeah. You know, I'm a tall guy and there's some, there's some lads out there, not so much myself no more, but there's some lads out there that get nervous when they look at people i just find everybody the same you know you've got to go in there with an open mind at the end of the day we all cut we all bleed we all get hurt and you know we, we all take damage and not every man can take a punch at the end of the day yeah in terms of your style how would you describe it you a come forward fighter you fight on the back foot you know how would you describe it yourself um it all depends on who i'm fighting you know it's um if I'm fighting an awkward fight, so I like to hold back, wait until he brings it to me, and then um, counter with what he's got. But it just depends on the fight as well. It all it all varies. I like, you know, every, not not every fight's the same. They're all different. You know, one minute I could be on the attack, next minute I'm on the counter, I'm on the defense. So not one of my fights are the same, really. It's all the same style, near enough. You know, there's a few more things I work on in between fights. I'm always looking to get better. But I mix it up as I go along. Yeah. What's that What's that training process like for you when you're prepping for fights like this? Um. See, my BKB journey started um, late last year, about October, my BKB journey started. And in that time, I've won the world title uh, belt for another organisation, not so big as the BKB, but um, and then I won the uh, European uh, European title for another organisation, which is not so big as the BKB, but I still won them in the bare knuckle scene. And within three months, I fought three fights and won all of them. So the fighting and the camps between them fights was in really intense. And now it's like it's still intense, but. It's, I've got something to look forward to, but it's dragging a bit, this this training camp. You know, it, it's really dragging. I like to keep active and fight and fight and fight. So this is a bit of a different one for me, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, because it, is, work, but, hmm. uh, it is different. You know, BKB is kind of like the big leagues in a sense. That's how I describe it compared to other, emotion, uh, other promotions. You know, fighting at the O2. I suppose, you know, that training camp, is, you know, what's your mentality going into it, knowing that you're fighting on this promotion as opposed to other promotions? 
I, I'm a I'm a professional fighter now. I'm a professional athlete. You know, there's a switch that's been switched on in my head, and it's you know up the levels or don't bother. You know, you you're in there with the big boys. You're in there with the big dogs. This ain't no game. It wasn't no game from the start, but this is serious now. We've moved up in the leagues. You know, you, you you've got to take it serious. If you don't, then I just keep telling myself: if you don't take it serious, I push myself every day. If you don't do it, don't bother. Because I'm not messing about now. This this is like you say, it's a big leagues, and just to fight and have a privilege of fighting every O2, and that's that's an accomplishment on its own without having the victory and whatever else comes with that. Yeah, fighting Richard Samuels, not a lot about him, you know, there's not a lot of footage, not a lot of tape to kind of prepare for him. Does that make it more difficult to, to train for? Um, Yes and no, because throughout my boxing career, I never looked into people that I was fighting, never, not once, never bothered studying them. I just went in there, I didn't even want to know who he was at one stage. But with my BKB career, it's completely different. I like to background them. I like to get what I can on them. And I like to study the videos, watch them every night before I go to sleep, watch them in the morning before I go to work. But you see, it's a bit different. Like you say, there's not a lot of footage out there. What footage that is out there, it's old footage. So from 2018, when his last video was, that might not have been his, that might have been his last fight, but that he could, just, could have still been training from then till now. So you don't know where he is in his... You know, so it's a bit of like going in it with the darks, going in, going in. Oh, really? I've got my words out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one of them. I'm used to it, but I like to know what who I'm fighting. Yeah. I suppose the benefit of that is that a lot of fighters can get stuck in this game plan and they don't kind of deviate from it. And then what they find is that when the fight switches up, they don't know how to react. So, like, kind of having that kind of loose reactive mindset going into it can actually be an advantage i don't know if you um kind of feel that yeah yeah because um like you say when you watch a video of a fight so it's not he's not always going to fight the same as what your video you've seen so me not having a lot of footage on him and watching him a lot then it's like you say it's um it can be an advantage as well so it's just um it's just see what comes on the night in that sense you know, I'm ready for whatever comes and I'm ready to give 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 what it takes and uh, to walk away back with yeah. Yeah. How are you finding the promotion so far? I know you went to the media day uh, yesterday. How's that? Oh, wicked, mate. It's on another level, like you say. It's um, the big leagues now. Um, yeah, it's uh, overwhelming. It's sort of, you know, it's like you're actually a professional athlete and not many people still to this day um, take BKB serious like it should be taken, you know. But um, give it another five, ten years, mate. It'll be bigger than boxing. It'll be the biggest combat sport in the world. That's what I believe myself. Yeah, because, you know, bare knuckle boxing has this kind of reputation of being like hay bales in a car park. And, you know, BKB are kind of changing that perception of it, aren't they? Like that kind of uh, legitimizing the sport in a sense. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And it's um, it's a good feeling to know that you're on such a big stage, you know, it's um, even for artists nowadays, like singers and, you know, some of them that are famous, worldwide, renowned, known, and they've not even been to the O2, performed at the O2, and there's me fighting at the O2. So it's like a real, real life accomplishment. Yeah, what are you expecting from that experience? What are you hoping for? Obviously a victory, but, you know, aside from that, you know, the atmosphere, what are you kind of thinking it's going to be like? Um, well, I went there, uh, BKB 35 obviously I was just spectating and, and watching the fights but the atmosphere and the vibe mate, it was nothing like I've ever felt before in my life and I was just there in the crowd watching the fights so being being a fighter and walking into the music and being on that stage it's going to be another level I don't let things worry me as such like I get more nervous doing interviews and speaking on the camera and doing podcasts than I do getting in the ring believe it or not but um yeah, I can I can handle that. I can handle that pressure. I like that line. Like I like that stage. That's that's a bit of me. That is that's, that's me. I like to I like to play to the crowd. You know when I can, and I just like to entertain. I'm an entertainer. What are your sort of um, what's the end goal with BKB? Do you have your eye on certain yeah. people or titles? You know what's the what's the end goal? Um, 
the end goal is, mate, to um, travel the world, hopefully. You know, I like the bolts. The bolts are a nice idea. I've got three sets of in front of me now. Um, but they're not the be-all and end-all for me. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'll take every single one of them that I can, and I will. Uh, especially the police because that bowl that's, that's my favourite and I, I, I do like that bowl but um, it's about creating a legacy for my kids and travelling the world and being able to say when I'm dying on my deathbed I did that yeah because obviously we've hosted shows with um, you know in Thailand uh, we've sent fighters to Dubai to America you know this really is kind of like a, a global promotion I suppose is that the kind of appeal to signing with this promotion obviously it's one of the biggest Uh, in bare knuckle but you know I guess that's that international aspect is a big kind of selling point isn't it Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I want, I want, you know, I want, want to be known. Like, I want, I want to be known for my, for my fighting, for my performance, for, for what I do in the ring, for the showboating, for the entertainment. I want to be known for that because what I do when I'm in there, it's not like no other. There is a few people that do it, and they are very good at it. But you know, because of my height, it looks like I don't know what I'm doing when I'm in there. But I've got it all under control, and I do it well. You know, I'm a bit um, all over the shop, but. It works for me and it works wonders. Yeah, speaking of uh, like showboating and entertainment, I've seen a little bit of um, beef between you and Eric Olsen. He used to be on BKB, he's now with BYB, our partner uh, promotion in America. Talk to me about that, what's going on there? <laughs> well, um, Eric decided to um, decided to offer me out and say he was English man can't fight. So, I, you know, I've retaliated. He wants it, he can have it. I'm ready any time, any place, any day. You tell me when, Eric. I'm your man. But um, he likes to give it the big I am. And he likes to bully people on social media. But I'm not one to be bullied. I take everything with a pinch of salt, with a smile on my face. He cannot hurt me just as much as he would not be able to hurt me in the ring or in the trigon. So bring it, baby, bring it. That's all I can say. Where do you think that comes from, Eric? Because Eric's very big on the anti-Englishman kind of angle, isn't he? Yeah. Where do you think, like, I don't know, what do you make of that? What do you make of him? What do I make of him? I'm not going to say on camera what I make of him. <laughs> I'll, I'll be polite. <laughs> but um, he's just uh, another door, you know. He's a, he's a door. He's, he's created a door for me, to, you know. He's, he, I jumped on it because it's more publicity. You know, and it's going to be an easy fight. I watched him fight. You know, he was good years ago. He's past his time now, so it's going to be a bit shit for me taking on a, taking out an old man. That's how it's going to feel for me bullying an old man. You know, so it's not going to feel good when I beat him. You know, but it's got to be done. But um, he's opened the door, and more for him, he'll regret the day that he decided to offer me out. That's all I can say on that subject. Yeah. Yeah, because people do love the drama, right? And that does kind of bring eyes over to you, especially with someone kind of as big in the in the game, in the bare knuckle game as Eric. And Eric's been on like every promotion, it seems like. Um, is that kind of part of it? Part of getting involved is trying to like, you know, get that kind of name up there, get your name out there? Yeah, definitely. You've got, you've got to get your name out there. You know, there's some people that love me. There's some people that hate me. But I'm conquering both, both sides at the end of the day. Not everybody's going to love you. So why not get the ones that don't like you to hate you as well? So then you've got both of them. And I'm um, I'm not really bothered with what which one they are because I know there's some people out there that do like it and do like what I do. I'm not too cocky and arrogant with it, like Eric. You know, he started something. I know what sort of person he is. And um, he'll never get one up on me. Never. Not in the ring. Not on social media. He started something that he will never be able to finish. And like I said, it's... Um, it's going to be a horrible day when I have to beat an old man up in the ring, but some things have just got to be done. Can you see that fight happening? Like, do you, do you think it's realistic that oh, you two um, might meet? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm game for it. Literally, I am game. He messages me on social media um, today on the way back from work, and um, he's all talk. Eric is, you know. Because he can't get one up on me on social media. He tries to come out with some uh, malicious stuff. But, you know, like I say, take it with a pinch of salt. It is what it is. Poor little Eric. <laughs> but, um, you know, that time will come. Because he is due a slap from an Englishman. 
you know. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, Eric, it's going to be me, mate, and you're not going to like it because it's going to hurt. Coming back to BKB36, say, every, every, say everything does go your way on the night on January 27th and you are victorious. What's next for you after that? Um, I'm an open book. You see, I'm, I know there's a few people in gloved boxing and bare knuckle that do dodge fighters. Um, I don't see the point in entering the sport to do that myself. I want to fight the best. I want to beat the best to be the best. You know, so I'm an open book. So it's whatever Jim and Joe bring to me. And whoever they do bring to me, without question, it's a yes. You know what I mean? We don't even have to ask me. It's just they give me somebody at the end of the day. And that's who I'm fighting. It's my job to fight. That's what I do. I'm not there to ask questions. I'm there to get in and do what I do. See. But, yeah, but the ultimate goal is to beat the best in my division and go places. Sounds like legacy is quite an important thing to you, then. Um. Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, last year I struggled a lot and um, my life's, without getting into too much detail, my life's not been the best and that's only because of my own fault. And now I've found BKB, it's like I've found myself. So this is going to bring something that my kids and my family can look at and think, you know, he did make something of himself, you know, and I enjoy it. So I'm following it through and I'm going to do it until I can't do it anymore. Yeah, because, you know, we, you talk about being a showman, entertaining the fans, but it sounds like this sport does a lot for you as well. Oh, 100%. Mate. Yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's like a mental medicine. You know, it just keeps the demons at bay and keeps me on the track to success. You know, it, ma it makes me focused. It, you know, it gives me goals. It gives me determination. It just gives me aspects in life that um, I never had without it. And with BKB, it's just something raw and it just brings out a good person in me, believe it or not. I know it's blood, gore and violence, but it just sort of settles something inside that without BKB, it's not a nice person. So it's it sort of saved my life in some some ways. That's Tyrone Elif. He's making his BKB debut at BKB 36, Journey 27. Tyrone, best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, mate.